Hello everyone, uh, this is Chumuri. Uh, today I want to share a way of building a thousand point turret army for beginner players and exactly what to buy. Now this list will focus on uh, using like the least amount of money to get the most power of the turret army. And I will also present you a list that you can grab right off the bat and use it immediately on the table. And also I figure out a way that you only have to buy like the bare minimum of some unit, which will always going to be useful later on if you continue to collect your Terranid army. So let's get started. Now the first thing you want to get is a star collecting box. Uh, this box contain, uh, contains like one root lord, eight gene stealers, and one Moloch or Trigon or Trigon Prime. Depends on what you want to build it. In this case, we're going to build it into a Trigon Prime. So this is one box you want to get. Moving on, you want to get one Hive Tyrant box. You want to assemble this box into a Flyrant, which I will talk about later. You want to also want to get one box of Gene Stealer Brood that contains 8 Gene Stealers. One box of Hormagons contains like 12, but we only need 10 in this case. So, so two boxes of Termagon Brood. Yeah, that's it. That's all you need to buy. So let's check out like the shopping cart. You only need one Star Collecting, one Gene Stealer, two Termagon, one Hormagons, and one Flyrant. That's it. Uh, that's uh, cost about... 226.75 US dollars, which is like $227, which is less than $230, and you get to start your Terranid army. And I think that's pretty pretty dirt cheap. Like, And all these units right here, they are essential core units. Like, None of these units are going to be sort of useless or like uh, situational. These units are absolute mandatory, maybe except the Moloch. But in this case, we're going to buy it because it's contained in the Star Collecting box. It gives you like a Brew Lord and Gene Stealers. So it's a much like a value pack. So this is definitely mandatory. So here we go. That's all you need. Like 23 bucks and you've got your problem solved. You can start collecting your Terranid Army. Now, this is the part where most YouTubers just leave you be. They just say, okay, go buy this and go figure it, right? That's what, you do. That's what I do. But like, not me. Like, what, like I said at the very beginning of the video, I give you a list. Okay, I, I create a list for you based on the unit you just purchased right here. And you can start like a very potent pot uh, Terranet army that you can also uh, tweak a little bit and expand later on. So here we go, here's the list. Uh, this list has a, a point limit of a thousand point. It's a thousand point on the dot. So it's very clean. So people have OCD like me will feel so comfortable. Like I'm not giving you a list like nine, 997 point because that's just gonna kill me, right? It's gonna drive me crazy. So it's a thousand point list. Um, it's a battalion detachment, okay? You can give it any high fleet. High fleet is sort of like a chapter tactic for Space Marine or Dynasty codes from Necrons, you know. It's like, it's high fleet, it gives you like an army-wide buff. Um, in this case, we choose Kraken because Kraken is very mobile. It's a very melee oriented way to play. Uh, that's why we choose Kraken here. So uh, if you're like a beginner, you can feel free to choose Leviathan as well. Leviathan is the high fleet that gives six plus feel no pain. Uh, as long as you're within the synapse range. So that's good. You know, that's also good if you don't want to remember too much stuff when you start playing Terran and Army. Leviathan is not a bad choice too. But in this case, we choose Kraken. Now, let's talk about unit. So you get one Hive Tyrant, one Blue Lord, 16 Gene Stealers in one squad, 10 Hormagons in one squad, 23 Termagons in the, uh, with Devourer, and then you get one Trigon Prime. And that's your army for a thousand points. So now you have the list, obviously feel free to copy it down, but let me explain how this list works. Like what's the synergy, what's the tactic, and how do you play this list, and how do you play Terranid in general. Now first of all, let's talk about uh, how Hive Tyrant works. Hive Tyrant is a, it's a, it's a HQ unit that's very generic, that uh, it can do melee, it can do shooting, uh, it also provides synapse, which is like a network for Terranid units, like some lesser creatures such as uh, uh, Hormagons and Termagons, they need to babysit within the synapse range, otherwise they go crazy. They lose a minus one to hit if they are shooting, and they lose minus two when they are charging, if, if they're melee. So it's really bad, you they need you need to babysit them. Now Hive Tyrant itself is a synapse creature, okay, so you can do that. The reason why we give it wings is because we want to increase its mobility. It can move around the battlefield as it wish. Uh, it can also deep strike because it has wings. As long as it has wings, you can deep strike on turn two. Adrenal glands is great because it gives one plus one to charging. So you don't, let's say you're three inch away from an enemy, you roll like double one, you're still gonna make it because that one inch actually matters. Especially now charging is very RNG oriented. It's like two D6 instead of like six plus something. So yeah, you probably need that one extra inch to make the charge. You also want Monstrous Rending Claw. Now Monstrous Rending Claw and Sizing Talons, they are pretty much the same, but Monstrous Rending Claw is better because it's free. It's like 
the Sizing Tongue costs like 14 or 15 points. Monster Shredding Claw costs nothing. It's free. So obviously take this one. Um, you want to take two Devourers as your range weapon. Now, the reason why I take Devourers over Death Spitter or Ve Heavy Venom Cannon is because we want to position this Hive Tyrant as like the sort of medium to close range combatant harassment unit. Uh, it can fly around, shoot its Devourers, and go into melee and shred things apart with a Rending Claw if it wants to, or continue to fly away. Now, the reason why you can do that is because, first of all, mobility, right? And also, second, it's a toughness 7 unit with 12 wounds, 3 plus armor save, 4 plus invulnerable save. And if you cast something like a Catalyst on itself, it will kind of be a 5 plus funeral pain. So it's like, it's a very tough unit to take down. The like, enemy will have to divert every firepower they have in order to take this Hive Tyrant down. And here's the twist. The reason why we take Kraken, which I the reason why I prefer Kraken in this case, is because you can give it a Kraken Relic. Chameleonic mutation it gives um, Hive Tyrant a way to have like minus one to hit when getting attacked by range attacks. So if uh, if a safe Space Marine Devastator squad with last cannon is trying to shoot at your Hive Tyrant, uh, instead of rolling a three plus, they need a four plus instead in order to hit your Hive Tyrant. So that's always good. Now in terms of power, we I give uh, Hive Tyrant Catalyst and Psychic Scream. Catalyst obviously, uh, five plus funeral pain is very useful to have it on yourself, so you don't have to rely on someone else that's like ten thousand miles away in order to cast a Catalyst on yourself. You don't have to; you can cast it on yourself if you want to. Uh, the reason why I take Psychic Scream is because um, Hive Tyrant is pretty vo it's pretty mobile. It's very very mobile. It can move around. Psychic Scream is like a amplified version of Smite, which is like a basic. Uh, psychic power. Now, psychic scream is especially useful versus psychers, and psychers are usually hidden in the you know behind the line. They are like very very back, very very backfield, so you can't exactly smite it because it's very far away, and you smite always hit the closest target. Now with uh, fly runs, it can move anywhere it wants, so it's much easier to land a psychic scream on a psyker, you know. So, but if you don't have a psyker in your enemy's army, it's okay. You can cast smite anyway because you can cast like two abilities per turn. So you can cast Catalyst, Smite, or Smite, Psychic Scream, or both. You know, it's up to you. So you can cast two abilities. That's really good. So that's Hive Tyrant. Let's talk about Brute Lords. Now, Brute Lords itself is also a Psyker. It also provides Synapse. Any unit within the Synapse range, remember, does not affect by morale. So uh, Gene Stealer does not need to be babysit with Synapse. But with Synapse, it, they can actually have, a, they can immune to morale, as long as they're within 12 inches with the Brute Lord, which it should. It should be within 12 inches, right? Now, Brute Lord itself is the real DPS dealer here. It can actually tear shit up, you know. Compared to Hive Turn, Hive Turn is more like a taunting slash harassing unit that just want to piss off the enemy, but they can't seem to kill it. Now, Brute Lord is the actual king here. He's the actual king that can do damage, okay? If Hive Turn is the queen that can move around and like take pawns and shit. A uh, brute lord is the king. It's a king that can like eat everything. Okay, that's a bad analogy. But <laughs> brute lord's melee power is very good. Also, it's a psyker. It can cast one uh, psychic ability per turn. Uh, usually, it's smite. But just in case, I give it the horror. Now, the horror it's a minus one to leadership on the targeted unit, which doesn't. It's kind of eh. You know, it doesn't do much. But it also minus one to their hit rolls. So now, what we can do is here's a combo here. So. If you cast the horror on, like, say, the enemy Devastator squad, okay, they got minus one to hit right off the bat, and if they are trying to shoot at your Hive Tyrants because of the mutation, they get minus two. It, it's accumulative, so it's like it's almost impossible to kill the Hive Tyrant because, like, their anti tank firepower is being casted with the horror, and like Hive Tyrant itself also have the mutation, so it's very hard for them to take down Hive Tyrant while the Hive Tyrant start, you know, continues to be annoying. So that's like that's one combo to use it. If you if there is no situation like this, if the chance does not present itself, it's okay. You can smite, just smite away. You know you can always cast smite. Remember, it only casts one per turn, so you can't do the horror and the smite. You have to pick one. So yeah, that's where you learn how to use psychic powers. That's moving on to the gene stealers now. Uh, gene stealers. Let's talk about the equipment. Okay, sizing talons, rending claws, and four asm maw. Uh, the reason why you take sizing talons, even though you have rending claws, because uh, having two pairs of rending claw does not give you any sort of bonus whatsoever. It does not give you plus one to hit. It does not give you um, extra AP. No, it does not. It just <laughs> you have two pairs of rending claw that, but you can only use one anyway. So why not give it a sizing talon, which is free, right? It's free. Uh, you have the uh, you can take it. So why not? Now the reason why you ever 
use Sizing Talon over Rending Claw is when you're fighting units with like very bad armor saves, such as Guardsmen for Imperial Guard, uh, another uh, Termagons for another Terranet player, or Guard uh, Guardian from the uh, Eldar, or any like weak armored unit, like 5 plus or 6 plus is falling under this category. You might want to use Sizing Talons over Rending Claw because they have shit armor anyway, you, they, you really don't need sort of any sort of AP, and you want to you know capitalize on the fact that Sizing Talon allow you to reroll a uh, failed uh, roll uh, of a one when it comes to hit, right? Because when you roll a one, uh, it's a fail. It doesn't matter what modifier you have. Like even with Brew Lord, it doesn't fucking matter. It's a one. One's always a fail. But sizing talents allow you to reroll the ones. So when fighting like weaker armor units, sizing ta using sizing talent as your attacking weapon, it's almost always useful. Now, uh, Ren Call obviously use it on tougher units such as Space Marine. Uh, like a tactical squad or terminators, that's when you use running claws because they have uh, higher armor. So higher armor use running claw, lower armor use sizing talons. Great, we got that. All right. So what's up with the ASML? What is ASML? Now ASML is something you get per four gene stealers. So for every gene stealers, you can uh, it replace. Uh, you can give one of the gene stealers an ASML. Now when you come to like melee attack, you kind of have to choose which weapon you want to use. You can use all on ASML or use all on running claw, but if you have Rending Claw, uh, if you have Asimov, always use Asimov over Rending Claw. The reason is because Asimov is minus 3 AP right off the bat. It does not need to roll a 6 uh, like Rending Claw does. It does because Rending Claw by default is like minus 1 AP, but only gets to minus 4 when you roll a 6 or a 5 if there's a Brutal around. Um, Asimov is like 3 plus, uh, minus 3 right off the bat. So that's great. Always use Asimov over Rending Claw. Now, um, Let's go back to the numbers of gene stealers. Like people may ask, like why sixteen? Why like what's what's up with this number, right? What's what's the point? Like why not twenty? Why not just take a full twenty? Why not take twelve? Why not take fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen? Like why not take all these numbers? Why take sixteen, right? Uh, here's the reason, okay. Like I said about SML, you can only take one SML per four gene stealers. So in order to take the maximum amount of SML per squad which is 20, right? You need you want 20 models in order to take like five ASMO, that you can do that. But sometimes you don't want to invest way too much point under gene stealers. So let's say you have like, uh, say 19, you have like 19 gene stealers, right? You're still only getting like four ASMO anyway. You're not getting the fifth. So it's like, if you want to get the maximum amount of SMO without spending all the point under, you know, gene stealers in order to boost them up from 16 to 20 models per unit, um, then you probably want to sit at 16. Then people may ask like, D why not just make it 12? Like 12 is nice. I get like three SMO and it's 12, it's cheap. Like what the fuck not, right? I only lose one SMO. I don't see what's the problem. I, go, I got all the extra point I can use on somewhere else, right? Sounds great. Except that uh, gene stealers have a ability that allows them to get one extra attack as long as they have like more than 10 models and you'll be like oh wait i have 10 more than 10 models and in fact there's 12 right but if you do that the enemy can easily pick off like they can pick off like three models shrink your count into nine and you will lose the buff immediately so you want to take extra models of gene stealers in order to prevent that from happening you want to take extra um let's say insurance to make sure that even when you reach the line you will still have like sizable amount of gene stealers which is above 10 and in order to get that one extra attack so that's why we take 16. 16 and 20 is the magic number actually i actually figured out the magic number is 16 or 20. you either take 20 because you want to completely invest in gene stealers or you take 16 which is like the the sweet spot of like having not full squad but having the maximum amount of SMO. so there you go that's the number that's the reason why i take 16. Okay, now we also have Hormagons. Now, Hormagons, it's a unit that dash around, they move really fast, they can power in and consolidate six inches. They're very good to uh, get things into combat. Now, what by that, I mean, like, when you charge a unit, um, you have to land the first model uh, within one inch of the unit you declare charged at, but not the rest of the models. The rest of the models, the rest of the nine models, they can move anywhere they want as long as they you know, move closer to the nearest enemy. And that applies in consolidation and pow in. So by doing that, you can actually get some unit that wasn't, you know, on the list of your charge target. They can still get into combat. Even though you cannot attack them, you can try to consolidate and pow in to, you know, get your hormagons into 
within one inch of the enemy, but you cannot attack them. But that doesn't matter because you got them into combat. Which you know, in next turn, they either uh, they either try to kill you in melee or they can fall back. Which you know, they gave up one turn of shooting unless they have some rule to specify they they don't have to care about that. You know, so it's really good. Hormagon is there for you to practice how you harass people. Also, it also allows you to. Um, absorb some overwatch firepower so your gene sealer can go in untouched so let's say you have like you want to charge in like a tactical squad and a tactical squad have like flamer and everything right so it's like if you charge your gene stealers in it's gonna be a bad day for your gene stealers so you want to use your hormagon to charge him first assuming they do survive before they even fight you can choose your gene stealers and charge that tactical squad and that tactical squad can no longer fire Overwatch because they already did and assuming your hormagon lives that's the case but if your hormagon just got completely wiped out in the Overwatch, then you know they can fire Overwatch again when your Genesis is trying to charge in. So be careful who you are using your Hormagons to charge at. Like, very be very careful. Make sure they don't die. So yeah. Also, we also got term uh, Termagons with Devourer and Trigon Prank with Toxin Spike. These two are like a combo, so I have to talk about you know both of them together. Now, uh, Termagon usually they are point cappers. They're kind of like a guardian for an elder or guardsman. They don't do much. Don't expect them to do, do to do too much DPS. Uh, their weapon sucks, everything sucks, it's like, you know, they, but they're cheap, they're dirt cheap, they're very good objective capture. But in this case, in this thousand point list, I make them carry Devorah. Now, Devorah is a much more expensive weapon, you know, it doesn't, it's a, it's, a f it's four points more expensive than the, well, actually two or three points, yeah. It's more expensive than the original uh, default of Flash Bore. Now, the reason why we take Devorah is because we have Trigon Prime. Trigon Prime is the unit that you can select one of your infantry, the infantry unit, and you can store it under its belly. Now, when it deep strike, it also brings out the unit you store within it. Uh, why, why do you do this? Because um, when Dragon Prime pops out, uh, it can pops out anywhere as long as it's further, like nine inches further away from the enemy. It drops the Termagons, and the Termagons with Devourers. Now, the Termagons with one Devourer uh, deals three shots uh, with strength four, which doesn't sound much, right? But when you have 23 Termagons, that's 69 shots of stream 4, okay? And it doesn't stop right there. You can also activate a stratagem called Single-Minded Annihilation, which costs two co command points. Uh, what it does, it allows that Termagon squad to shoot again. So that's completely insane. That's 138 shots in one turn. Like, n almost nothing's gonna survive that. Unless you're like a land raider or something like that, you're gonna survive, but if you're like a normal infantry squad, you're most likely gonna get wiped out. Or, um, or you know, at at best you have like one or two model left so this is what we call a termagon bomb now this is not like the most effective and the most used in pros things you know like they are not like the most used but they do give you a taste of power of what it is to feel like playing like a termagon bomb because you definitely can and with hive tyrant continuously to harass your enemy and brew lord gene sealer charging forward with hormagons to assist them these guys are going to surprise the enemy. They are going to pop out, shoot the enemy, and enemy have to choose. Like, do I deal with the Termagon or do I deal with the Gene Sealers? Because if I don't deal with the Gene Sealers, they're going to torment me into stress, right? But if I don't deal with the Termagons, they're going to use the Single-Minded Annihilation next turn again, which deals like equally devastating damage. So this list overall, it's a very aggressive and very like a, trying to like a one-hit kill type of list. Like, you know, you have Gene Stealers, uh, you have brute lords they can do devastating damage you have like hormagon squad that can assist them to doing so you have termagon uh, with trigon they form like a termagon bomb which when they deep strike out they can almost certainly kill like a weak enemy unit and they make back their point cost hopefully and then you also have flyers flying around like circling 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 around the battlefield choose which target to shoot next which target to go in for the kill so this overall is a very balanced and like a give you a taste of what a Terranet army feels like because this is it. This is what the Terranet army feels like. You have like a frontline unit, you have a sort of like a backfield unit even though it's not really in this list but uh, this list is like a Devourer, right? Uh, Devourer with like a, a Termagons and a Trigon Prime. It's a deep strike and the frontline unit. So later on that say you use this list, you want to like uh, expand your army, you want to um, okay, let's see. I want to have a 
hive guards okay you can add hive guards within this list i want more gene stealers you can add more gene stealers within this list this is a nice framework to start you can start with this framework and you can add another battalion detachment uh, also make a chronos so you can have your shooting unit be in that selection you know the chronos hive fleet and have the kraken have all the melee unit so that's it that's the list and like i said it costs like 230 usd like at best okay maybe there's like some tax or what's what whatever i don't know but it's, it's very cheap it's 230 bucks and it gives you this army so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm not gonna say to leave a like or whatever because i'm here to help people so if there's anything i said it wrong or anything i need to correct please let me know i'm kind of new to this whole video of making things so yeah let's skip the awkward goodbye and that's end of video bye bye